recording. Okay, so welcome everyone to the no cumulative geometry seminar. So it's a pleasure to have this week Paolo Carillo Rus uh, from Toulouse to speak about churn assembly map for discrete groups and index theory. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, really thank you very much for your for being there and uh, for the invitation. Thank you to Hank, Hank that uh, make, uh, made this possible. So uh, I will start with, uh, I, will, I, I, I changed the title because I think the, the more appropriate name is perhaps a Schoen von Kahn assembly map. And there are several assembly maps in the literature. So, okay, you let me just start with a brief introduction. Sorry for, for the experts on this, but I always start, uh, start my talks with a classic Atiyah uh, singer. So I'm going with functoriality. So just to recall a classic idea I, I, I will be very brief on this. You, you let me know if you can see it. So uh, if you take a, M, a compact manifold, let's say compact uh, manifold. So uh, just to, also for young people, I think it's okay to see this. So if you have elliptic operators, so the elliptic operators uh, in, in this manifold, then uh, in, the, in, in this case is it's, uh, it's classic that then you have a, a flat home property. So that means that given an operator, you have a, a flat home index, which I recall that is just the dimension of the kernel minus the dimension of the co-kernel. And I, I think one of the major um, progress in by Atiyah Singer is that they realized that this, uh, this function here is, is, it can be factorized by some appropriate quotient, which, which is in fact uh, the K theory, the topological K theory of, uh, of the cotangent space of M associated to M. So that means that this factor is here. And this is what is called the analytic index of Atiyah Singer. But the advantage is that now we are, we are dealing with a map between two groups, which is, uh, I recall you that the, the, the integrals is, can be seen as the K theory of a point, okay? Okay, so that was, that's, that's very classic. But in fact, also, if, if you add some extra hypothesis, for, for example, spin C, uh, then in fact, this K theory, this is a cohomological property in K theory. This is, you have a Tom isomorphism from the K theory of the manifold itself. And in fact, you can, you can consider that this map as a, as a map that uh, is induced by the projection to a point. So you take M projected to a point and uh, well, the, the map here is, in, is it, it can be seen as, uh, it can be interpreted as the, the uh, what is called the, the push forward of, of P associated to the canonical projection from M to a point. So in fact, uh, well, as, as may, m most of you know, this, uh, this index uh, was computed topologically by Atiyah Singer and uh, with a more modern view, in fact, Atiyah Singer, but also uh, Conis Kandalis, they made precise even in a more general context, the uh, kind of scandal is that uh, this trick, this uh, this morphisms that I will call trick maps, this P P uh, trick, this one. In fact, uh, the, the the topological index theorem it's is equivalent to to be able to to compare this uh, this uh, trick maps. So suppose you have a, a, a map from M to M prime, let's say a good map. Later on, I will say what means like good. In K oriented with some properties uh, for those that know. But suppose you can construct this, uh, this map that goes in the wrong direction of the functoriality because K theory in principle has pullback properties. Then, uh, well, you would like to have this property here. So this diagram is commute. And uh, well, this is true, in fact, but uh, this is uh, uh, how some index, index terms were proven uh, some years ago already by Atiyah Singer, maybe by, by another methods, but then it was clear that the push forward from reality and the, uh, and the, the, the fact that, able, that to be able to compute it, uh, these indices in another way are somehow equivalent. So this uh, generalizes to more complex settings, of course. In fact, this is uh, my introduction to try to get to assembly maps, because uh, instead of, if you have now, now B, a manifold is instead of a point, instead of a point, then you can think, uh, you can try to, let's say you take a submersions from M to B and the maps as before, that I will say what the good map is. 
and you would like to associate here uh, uh, push forward maps and in somehow assemble the indices that live. You mean by case. prime for the lower arrow? Uh, by prime, sorry. By Which prime? One? Yeah, you mean by ah. prime for the lower arrow, yes. Yeah, yes. And sorry. prime, by prime, by prime. By prime, sorry, yes, that's, uh, uh, that's true. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so if one is, I mean, uh, I, I will even recall how these this, uh, functionalities are proven, but uh, even I think I call this a P, but in fact it should be P prime or something. Oh, sorry. Yeah, should be okay. So this is P trick and this is P prime trick. So if this commutative diagram is in fact uh, what is called the family's index theorem, also proved by Atiyah Singer and formalized afterwards even for more general context, in particular the, the case of the space of Lewis by uh, Kohn and Scandalis. And uh, okay, so it, but you, my, my point here to introduce this kind of thing is that to, uh, to, be, to tell, tell you that uh, the, at the end, the, the elements of the K theory of, of B can be realized and assembled in different ways by depending on which kind of manifold you take. So you can, in fact, uh, this is for me the idea, the main idea of, uh, at least as I understood the, the assembly maps, because now if you have a, now we want to replace B by more involved non commutativity spaces, in particular by, for example, a group. Of course, then, then it will be not more the K theory, the topological K theory of a group, but the K, the K theory, for example, instead of KB, you would have to replace this by the K theory of uh, the C star algebra. Let's say reduce it, or, well, this kind of details will appear later. Uh, so this is my just my motivation to start these uh, the following slides, in which I will tell you uh, some things about the BOMCON assembly maps and and Shern assembly maps. So uh, so let the gamma be a discrete group, say countable. So uh, well, that's, uh, I'm, of course I'm, I'm saying as I understand it, the original papers of Baum and Kohn, uh, which were fundamental to this all this entire. Uh, research direction, bomb con assembly maps and higher index theories. So uh, they were interested in, in principle to uh, in higher index maps. So in, in here, here, uh, here, uh, this left hand side is, let's say, could be defined in several ways, but could be the this algebra of, of some cross product or some group, point, for example, or some uh, equivalent K theory if, if the action is proper. But there are several models in the literature. But they were interested in defining these higher index maps as before for gamma point. I will tell you uh, later on how to define these strict morphisms. And they were interested in higher index formulas, for example, uh, uh, the higher signatures of Novikov and, and applications, uh, for example, towards the homotopy invariance and the higher signatures, but also related to problems of, uh, of uh, existence of, uh, of obstructions to positive scalar curvatures and so on. Uh, of course, I should mention here, of course, the, the work of uh, Kohn and Moscovici in the case of uh, free actions and, and Galois coverings. So, uh, okay, so this is just for motivating again what, 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 what it means to assemble. So, uh, um, in, in the original papers of Baum, Baum and Kahn, uh, by original, I mean uh, the papers that appear at the early 80s. Some of them were preprint, some of them were surveys, and then become formalized later in some years afterwards. So in, in, that, in those papers, in fact, they were uh, trying to assemble this, uh, this indices as I was playing before for gamma point or gamma uh, or, or, or just base B. Uh, they were trying to, to have this kind of properties, this kind of diagrams uh, to commute, okay? I, I will later again say what this, these maps are, how can be constructed. Uh, but okay, so they were interested in assemble these maps to obtain uh, as an assembly map, an assembly map where this left-hand side is, uh, was defined as a limit. So you take all the possible uh, M and N in, and you take the maps, well, not possible, but K-oriented. And then you, you take a limit on uh, somehow using these push forwards. And then if you manage to do that, then, uh, then uh, you, you get an assembly 
define it exactly as uh, the push forward of associated to the projection to from M to a point somehow. So this is again the projection to a point uh, seen as an equivariant map. Okay, so this is uh, this is what was uh, uh, the beginning of uh, those papers just look at for. Uh, but then, of course, uh, okay, well, Bowman Khan conjecture, this is very, very famous conjecture in, in the field, that this is, uh, this assembly map is an isomorphism, which is still open and it has many consequences in topology, geometry, and analysis. Uh, but, well, another thing is that, of course, if you have, if you want this model of the assembly map to be, to be well defined, well, first you need to properly define the Schrick map. And then you need to prove the functionality, which is not uh, completely trivial. It is a, it's an index term in itself. And then if you do it, well, you, you have the, this group is well-defined and the assembly map is uh, well-defined. So this was uh, mainly a sketch by Baumkorn and in those papers. Of course, they, they, they gave the fundamental ideas of what are, we are doing now. But, but it was formalized afterwards using the powerful tool, I would say, of KK theory. So in fact, they, some years after they they gave a, a another model, let's say, for the left hand side uh, using uh, KK theory. This was done by Baumkorn and Hickson. And uh, with the years, uh, some other models uh, were proposed uh, for this left hand side. For example, the Bum Douglas model using uh, cobordisms and spin C modifications and, mo and other kind of mo models by Luke, for example, using just the stable homotopy idea. So, uh, but well, what about the original model? Which in principle should be the same, of course, but uh, I will say some words after at the end, if I have time. Well, in fact, uh, uh, some years ago with Bai Ling Wang, uh, uh, we used the formation groupoids even in the context of, uh, of uh, twistings even, so it's more general than this, to define that, uh, to define this, uh, I will recall it how, but to define this push forward maps for, for good maps, so essentially K-oriented, something like that. And in particular for n a point, so the, the assembly. And uh, we proved the functionality. I will also say a word how to prove the functionality because it's part of the idea also in the, the sequel. So in particular, we, we in particular one obtains that this map, this group is well-defined and, uh, and uh, the assembly is well-defined. So, but well, then I, uh, for me, the, the importance of this uh, very nice idea of Bowman and Kahn in the original papers was that this model was, uh, for me at least, was developed to compute explicit higher index formulas, uh, which is, well, every model has its own, its own uh, advantage and disadvantages. And, uh, but computing is always a, a problem, of course. And I, I have, for me, this model was developed for that. And then I will try to say some things of how to use this model to compute some formulas. Okay, so just to, to tell you how how to define these strict maps and, and use them in uh, in other homological theories to, to do the Ashern assembly map, then I need uh, to do a digression in, in the formation to the normal cone construction and push forward maps. So in fact, uh, given a manifold M and a submanifold X. Uh, smooth manifolds, then there is a there is a construction which is called deformation to the normal cone construction, which in fact uh, it's a as a man it's, it's a manifold. It's, it's a manifold construction. That's a part of it's a big word, so that means that uh, this set that I am going to write down has a manifold structure. So in fact, the as a set, this is just a well the normal bundle. So this this is the normal bundle of. Uh, uh, X in M, so normal bundle, and then you have a M times R plus. So it's it's essentially a manifold that it's parametrized over the reals, and then you can of course cut. You can restrict it to some intervals, for example, to zero close at zero one or some other kind of intervals. But the, well, the point is that uh, you have this manifold, which is in fact uh, uh, this is a big word. So you, you need a how to well you need to say how to put a string infinity structure. On this, but the, I, I have not time to recall this, but I, there are now good references on that. The idea is that uh, at the end, uh, this part, for example, it's a still open, so it's a it's an open so, uh, dense part. 
in, uh, in D, in this deformation. And the normal has also its classic uh, structure, so it's a, the, the complement is closed with its own uh, original C infinity structure as a vector bundle. But the main feature, the main uh, feature of this property is that uh, D is uh, somehow functorial. So it's a, this is a major feature. So what I mean that is that uh, you have a map from couples. So you have a couples means that you have a map from M to M prime C infinity, which uh, sends X to X prime. Then if you have this data, you, you can show that uh, there is a map at C infinity map from uh, the respective deformations and you have the, the nice compatibilities to, with respect to compositions and all this. So this, this is just a differential geometry exercise, maybe but not an exercise for first year students, but uh, still it's not so difficult. Um, but in fact, the map is very, very natural. It's in fact, uh, it, out of zero is just the function and, uh, and uh, in zero. So if you have normal vector, then you, you, deriv you derivate F, but in the normal direction, um, something like that. But uh, what is the consequence of this is that, in fact, uh, consequence, a very interesting consequence, a corollary, is that if now you have a, an inclusion of Lie groupoids, that I will, uh, for example, you have X and you have a M, then you have a, a Lie groupoid. So it's also a big word because it contains a lot of things. So this Lie groupoid given by, um, by the deforming all the structures. So G1, in the, all the structure of a groupoid of, uh, of G1 as a, as a subgroupoid of G2. So you take a, a, sorry, maybe I didn't say it, but a groupoid G2 and a subgroupoid G1. So this is what I call, I will call the, the deformation to the normal cone uh, Lie groupoid. So, and as example of this, in fact, uh, it's a, uh, it's exactly con uh, tangent groupoid. For example, you take a, a the pair groupoid, and uh, the groupoid M itself seen as a unit. So the inclusion, let's say, with the diagonal, then you get what is called uh, was was introduced by Alan Con as uh, the tangent groupoid, which can be identified as a set. As a, in this case, the normal bundle can be identified with with the tangent space and and you get something like this. Well, and we, it's, it's common to call the tangent group point the restriction to zero one. So it's a, in principle, the deformation was defined over the reals, but uh, it's commonly used here. Okay, so uh, this, why this is a digression? Because in the, at least I, I will say, I would say uh, uh, in this example, so for this example, uh, if you take the sister algebra of, of this group point, every Lie group point has, Sister algebras. These groupoids allow to have uh, the following kind of exact sequences. So in this case, you have a, a sequence of a, a short exact exact sequence of sister algebras of the following kind. So it, you have a m times m uh, zero open one closed, and in fact, uh, this algebra is uh, contractible because of the presence of this interval. And then if you have a theory, for example, K theory of sister algebras that has a, a six term exact sequences and a homotopy invariance and all that, then, then, um, the, then the, this, the induced map in K theory is an isomorphism. In, in K theory, for example. And this allows to define, for example, the map going from the K theory of, well, th this algebra, here of the, the tangent space is in fact the algebra of vanishing functions at, the, at infinity of the cotangent via, via the Fourier isomorphism, fiber-wise. Fiber and then you can see that, well, it's uh, nowadays more or less classic, at least in this domain of deformation coupoids, to, to see that in fact the, the index map of a Tia singer can be in fact uh, defined using only deformation coupoids. So for example, this was done, of course, by, by Alan Kahn, and then done in a more general context by, for example, Hilson Scandalis in a very nice paper on one way from reality, uh, 
between the spaces of leaves of foliations. So why need I need this regression? Because I, then I, I have I, I can tell you um, how to define these strict maps using uh, the formation group points. Uh, first in K theory, and then I will for defining the Shern assembly map in, in, in uh, essentially in cyclic uh, periodic homology. But uh, so let me start how to define these maps. Well, first of all, if you have a um, a function from M to N, let's say we are in the C infinity world, so function between two smooth manifolds, then the idea uh, it's to you to consider consider it as a groupoid immersion. So that means that you take this new map seeing as a groupoid morphism. Here is a, the idea is that in fact, uh, this groupoid is, is essentially a point in the, in the world of, uh, it's, a, it's a Morita equivalent to a point, but so in, in the world of, uh, uh, the world of uh, differentiable stacks, this is really a point. So this is mainly F. This is just a small modification of F. But if you take this, uh, this example, then you can, uh, take the deformation to the normal to the normal cone construction. So this is G, a, G, uh, a subgroupoid G1 uh, and a group in, in a groupoid G2. So the uh, the construction is also valid for immersions. And then you have this uh, big deformation to the normal cone Lie groupoid, which is uh, depends on F. So it's a big groupoid, but uh, still you have uh, the pieces that we will need. So it has it has this. Um, this part, which is which, which contains at every t different from zero, the groupoid m, m times m times n, which is essentially in the groupoid uh, world is n because it's, it's Morita it will, it's Morita equivalent to n, and here you have a, a, well, a vector bundle. Here I'm doing some identifications for simplicity because this is, uh, is this bundle is identified with the normal bundle to the to the to the uh, to f uh, times uh, the diagonal, and then uh, okay, so this is a commutative bundle, but this is a bundle over a vector bundle over m, and if this vector bundle over n has a spin c structure, then we can have, a, for example, the Tom isomorphism in K theory. So this is used to 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 define this uh, to this strict map because then. Well, you consider as above the the short exact sequence associated to this deformation groupoid. Uh, it it has an evolution at zero to, to this uh, to this uh, this algebra of this vector bundle, seen as a groupoid. So it, this is a commutative uh, groupoid. So it, in fact, this is uh, again the functions vanishing at infinity on the dual. But again, this uh, this algebra is is uh, contractible. This one is contractible. And then it it allow it, it then it implies that E zero in, in the inducive map of uh, in K theory it's an isomorphism it's an isomorphism because of the presence the existence of uh, six term short exact sequences as well. In particular, you can define this uh, strict maps as uh, uh, so taking the Tom isomorphism then some Fourier transform uh, some more, sorry the morphism associated to some Fourier uh, isomorphism between algebras. And then you take the deformation group point to, to, to conclude. The last map is in fact just induced by some uh, group point Morita equivalence. This was already done by, by Conn in his book in 94. And, and then, uh, uh, well, mentioned that of course it can be generalized to so some higher settings. And this is what we, we, we did. And it was inspired largely by, by Hilton Scandalis, which did some things like this in the case of immersions of. Uh, between the spaces of leaves of regular foliations. The point is that, uh, well, that's something uh, very interesting about the deformation to the normal cone is its functionality. It's, it's, uh, it has this property of, of uh, not only be applied to a couple of manifolds, but couples, uh, but uh, functions between couples of manifolds. So in particular, we have an action of uh, M that uh, preserves the, the subspace N, then you have a, you have a you have an action on the deformation. So in particular, uh, taking DF as a bulk, so DF was just the deformation to the normal cone associated to a map F. Then if the map is now equivariant and uh, you have the, the action, the di diagonal action on M times M, then you can show that the, the group acts again on DF. 
and the, 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 you can then form a new uh, semi-direct probit group point here uh, and is essentially define the push forward exactly as uh, above. So tell me some of reason here I'm supposing uh, let's say um, uh, well this map is uh, has a pin C structure or some kind for example in this equal M would, will be uh, at least a normal uh, proper sorry will be a gamma proper manifold and this this would be a nice bundle um, then you have a the Fourier isomorphism and the deformation group point that tells you how to to go from from the k theory of m to the k theory of n now this is really the index uh, the equivalent index uh, family index that can be shown if, if you can if you can give manage to give another definition of these maps as as uh, equivalent indices as proposed originally by bon and con you can show that this is exactly the same map it's not so difficult. Okay, so this is the definition. Then let, let, let me just uh, tell you an idea of how to prove uh, the the exercise uh, of showing. Uh, well, it's not an exercise; it's a big, huge thing to prove the functionality. This is uh, uh, since I'm using slides the first uh, one of the first times I can put this diagram. Uh, usually in a blackboard, I cannot do it. So, so th this is a this is a, a diagram to a sketch how to prove the functionality. So you have f shrink have G shrink, and you have G uh, F followed by G shrink, and then you have if you want to to uh, to show the functionality, well, you have to show that this big diagram is commutative. And in fact, with Bailing Wang in K theory, uh, we 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 followed uh, an idea used already by Hilsum and Scandalis, and also uh, the board and um, the secure and Mister in a different setting. To, to show that in fact, uh, what you need to, to show, to put in here is a, a small diagrams using double deformations. So since uh, for defining each map, you need a deformation, what it's needed here is, is some kind of a double deformation. So go, go from DF to D here. And this is what we managed to, to do in this uh, K theory setting, in, in the twisted K theory setting with Biling Wang some years ago. But then this is this now I can I can I can I can get now with the to the main topic of the talk is that uh, how to do this uh, to assemble Schern characters. That's uh, I, I don't I don't know if I mentioned it, but I put it in the title. So this is a common work with uh, uh, Bai Ling Wang and Hang Wang. Uh, what I'm going to talk about. Um, so the the idea is that uh, well, I, I I wanted to put this diagram also to show you that. Uh, well, in diagram, I didn't put the K theories, otherwise uh, the space would be enough. So here are everywhere there are K theories. For example, the maps uh, called T are tom by mean Tom isomorphisms and the little, the little M's are Morita equivalences of group points. And so, but my point is to say that uh, once you have the group points and the, 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 the right group points, then you can expect to apply this to different theories other, other than K theory, than K theory. Of course, you need to, you, you will need some things, and this is what I'm going to tell you about, but uh, using group points. So uh, for getting the assembly, the assembly maps, um, I will uh, tell you what, uh, what kind of theories we, will, we can consider. For example, if you have a M, a gamma proper manifold, so there are groups which are um, called, uh, well, can be called at least by reasons I will mention later, perhaps. Um, like the, the delocalized cohomologies of uh, of uh, M, the equivalent delocalized de 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 cohomologies. So here I put this as a definition. So it's uh, this means uh, the, the sum is over the finite uh, conjugacy, the set of finite conjugacy classes, uh, finite order uh, element, the classes, the conjugacy classes of finite order uh, elements. Uh, and this side is in fact. Uh, uh, the RAM cohomology, compactly supported the RAM cohomology of groupoids. So this is uh, well developed by many people. I would say mentioned perhaps uh, Tu and Shu, uh, but also in the theory of stacks by Berand. I hope I, I write it round, right. Gino and Shu, for example, they have a very nice uh, asterisk uh, paper on the stack topology, and they, in particular, they treat very well all the details on on the RAM cohomology for group points. Uh, also, it can be defined that all this thing can be defined using the so-called uh, inertia group point. 
and then uh, well of course you have to show that this decomposition holds this is uh, more or less classic more or less uh, okay but here i take it as a definition so it's a uh, this the local acid groups are like that and uh, well why these are good groups to consider in this index theory setting well because there are, there is a a, a, a sharing character which was uh, formalized by originally uh, proposed by Bauman Kahn and then in, in a slightly generalized, generalized setting uh, to ensure they they uh, they prove in, even in twisted K theory that this, this uh, that there are sharing characters here that gives an irrational isomorphisms with this theory so from the K theory to to these uh, delocalized groups this was expected of course by many people and uh, given so my point is that in this in, in our work with the Weiling and Hang, we use this particular construction of two and shoe because it's uh, very natural uh, in the strict sense of the term, and, but also uh, it is very explicit. At least uh, for me, it was very explicit. So it, it's given explicitly as a composition of the concern character, the classic one. And uh, follow it by some isomorphism, which is very explicitly this is very explicit and is described in this paper by Tuanshu. I will call it the two shoe isomorphism. So it's some kind of a hot shield custom Rosenberg thing. Okay, so the, this is our good groups. And uh, so once you have these groups, well, uh, the point is that we could uh, we could uh, generalize these push forward constructions. Uh, of course, there are details that I will mention, but uh, given a, a K-oriented map, perhaps can be more weak than that, but at least K-oriented, it's enough for our, my purposes today. So you have a, a gamma equivariant map between M and N and uh, between two proper co-compact manifolds, and you can define a morphism in the wrong way uh, of the functionality between these cohomological groups. So uh, here, uh, well, here just there's it's not really completely important for this talk that this, this is a shifting. Um, so RF is some is the rank of some bundle of uh, of uh, TF, which is uh, essentially just the bundle needed for the K orientation. This is modulo two. So this theory is is, is periodic. It's just a zero or one. So you can define the strict map using the the same kind of idea of uh, in K theory, but that uh, when, as I will say, you we need appropriate algebras. So as some of you know even better than me, that uh, I mean, for this uh, to be applied in cohomological theory, you need appropriate algebras. You know, you, you cannot just stay with C star. So well, uh, the morphism is defined as a Tom isomorphism, which is very well explicited in the in these papers by Berend and Gino and Shu. Um, here, here the actions, the manifolds are proper, so it's not very complicated. Then this two shoe uh, isomorphism, which we will translate the morphism in terms of uh, cyclic periodic cohomology. Here is where the subtilities start. So here is some kind of some kind of Schwartz type algebra, which I call, because uh, you need, uh, we will need later on that uh, you need some condition of uh, rapidly decreasing in the direction of the fibers of the vector bundle fibers not in the direction of the group. And then you can have a, well, an isomorphism induced by some Fourier algebra isomorphism, which is still holds. And then you have a, a deformation morphism. So by deformation morphism, I mean that we, I use the, the um, we used here the, uh, some algebra associated to the deformation groupoids. So this is, uh, and we are using that periodic uh, cyclic homology has good properties. So in particular, good homotopy invariance properties at least uh, adapted to this problem and the existence of uh, six term short exact sequences. So th this, these Schwartz algebras are not really Schwartz. In fact, they are, I call it type Schwartz because they are Schwartz in once you arrive to zero, but they are not Schwartz in the other direction. So th these algebras, I, I, I worked out this, these algebras in a different setting, perhaps in 2007 for the tiny group point, mainly was my thesis with the scandalis at the time, so many years from now. And then it was, uh, it was uh, highly improved by the board and scandalis some years ago, maybe 2012 or so. 
um, by well by, they wanted to deal with some some other problems but in particular it's a uh, these constructions make sense for this deformation group point and then uh, okay do you have a, then an isomorphism from the moiety equivalence of group points uh, so in fact when you have two group point two moiety equivalent group points the per, the periodic cyclic homologies and cohomologies are isomorphic this is proved by a, at least I know by Perot, when in fact this is this hidden in some of his papers. It's not the main topic of his paper, but it's about the index theory for legal points. Uh, in any case, the map here is kind of is, exists, even if it's not an isomorphism. But in fact, it is an isomorphism as expected. And just notice that uh, remark. Up to now, for example, if uh, if TF is a nice bundle but N is not proper, here we could uh, stop. I will use that to assemble the map in cyclic periodic homology later. Okay, so then, well, you, you can you can came you you can came back to the uh, to the homology of forms by some two shoe isomorphism. So you have a, a push forward, and one of the first things you can show we, we could show with this map. This maps is that uh, well, it's compatible with the K theory up to uh, to some. Uh, Todd classes. So this is some the localized dream and rock theorem. Uh, so here, here you have a some Schern character, but had has to be twisted by some the localized Todd classes that I will try to sketch what they are by uh, giving a, a sketch of the proof. So here again the the rank of the bundle. The, this RF is the rank of the vector bundle. And then I, let me give you the sketch of the proof, which is uh, for me very natural. Once once you have these right group points, uh, the proofs are natural. So it means that uh, the, the, you can decompose it in parts. For example, this the the this this diagram one. So the the, the theorem is to show that this big diagram is commutative. Diagram one explains the Todd classes because uh, you need a compatibility with the between the Tom isomorphisms, and th there is what you need to to twist by by some Todd class. These Todd classes were were already defined by in a, in a paper by Baum and Kohn, uh, Fed of topology, but also by Bai Ling Wang and uh, one of his collaborators. Sorry, I forgot the name. Um, so th this uh, this is more more or less classic so as well. So this this part one of the diagram is uh, is to is where you put the the, the, the Todd class. But then, for example, diagram two here is just by definition of two and shoe, and from diagram three to five is just the naturality of the Schern, of the con Schern character with respect to morphisms of algebras. And then, well, there's a maybe non-trivial part, but it's not difficult that is compatible with the Morita equivalence. And then this is just by definition. So it's uh, it's not so difficult to prove this kind of uh, problems of uh, diagrams once you have the right group points. And uh, a right descript a geometric description, I would say, uh, of the push forward maps. One other thing we can show uh, using the K theory model is that uh, that these push forward maps are functorial. So essentially, uh, the proof follows the same lines as the K theoretical proof, but uh, using exactly the same deformation points. But the subtility, which is not uh, trivial at all, is to, to use appropriate Schwartz type algebras. So it's a, this is a big subtility, but uh, it can be done. Then, then you have these uh, push forward maps in the localized uh, cohomology. And well, one of the first things you can do with this functorality things is to assemble this, uh, what, what I mean by assemble is to, to, to construct the group that you can get from uh, from these uh, push forward maps, so for example, uh, you can uh, so you can take now the, the group. This it's a group that will only depend on the group gamma. So this this group I, I am putting here, it's a, it only depends on gamma. And uh, you define it as following Baum and Kahn by uh, by taking the limit. Uh, well, here you have some m is some. Uh, uh, spin C manifolds co compact gamma proper and the dimension uh, with the dimension equal to to this uh, star modulo or two. Uh, I, I just saw uh, one of the surveys of Baum and Kahn and at, at the, in the references 
it is marked that uh, that they were going to to work out at some point the the RAM cohomology for discrete groups. So I don't I don't know if this fits in that, but perhaps it is. At least the, it's constructed from the RAM models, and uh, it's a uh, it's a group. So it follows exactly the the same lines uh, proposed by Baum and Kahn. Uh, well, this is just uh, I will skip it. It's essentially, is 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 generated by by the uh, by precise cycle. So a manifold, a manifold like uh, above, and uh, a delocalized uh, form uh, on M, and uh, the, the, together with the relation induced uh, by the Schrick maps. So it's just equivalent. And then, uh, okay, so we can now, once we have the, the, the delocalized Dream and Rock theorem, and the push forward functionalities in K theory and in the localized cohomology, then this following term is just a corollary of all those results, meaning that uh, for any discrete group, there is a well defined uh, Shannon character and morphism. Here, this one. Sorry. And this explicitly given by in, in cycles by this. This is the consequence of Riemann Rock. Of the localized German rock and also of the ground wave functionalities in K theory and in the localized cohomology. This is not the first shared character of the type in the literature, at least I can mention the work of uh, Voigt, which uses a uh, uh, divariant uh, shared uh, uh, characters to define a, uh, in, in principle, should be equivalent to ours, but it is uh, different models again. Uh, there's also uh, I don't know if you and his collaborators, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, some weeks ago, Alexander Engel told us about uh, this uh, more general um, assembly maps, which exist also in the literature. And uh, as far as I know, uh, this one with push forward was not precisely defined. And uh, what we were looking in this, using again, these ideas of BombCon is uh, explicit model. So that means that this you can well you can make appear this kind of classes, so the Chern morphism is given like that. It is an isomorphism once tensoring with C. This is uh, it comes from the two and two terms. And uh, well, the, the one you we are now almost ready to assemble all this in, uh, in what, I, what we can call the Chern bomb con assembly map, because uh, well as I was mentioning before the construction of the push forward between uh, F and M, as I sketched before, can be done almost equally, but uh, uh, if N is not proper, then you can get you can get here at the end. And then you cannot go back in principle to the delocalized cohomology because then it may, might not, not be proper. For example, N point. In that case, the bundle TF is just a TM. So of course, M, M is still proper and uh, spin C. So in that case, you can define the, the push forward map associated to the projection to a point. So, so this is, a, sorry, this is just the projection to a point following the same construction as above. And uh, you can, again, use the wrong with functionality to show that uh, there is an assembly map as the bump can assembly map, but in cohomology or well in in, well, cohomology or homology, that depends what you, how, which, which side. But then it's precisely given like this. So it's just a, a, a generalization of the BAMCON assembly map in K theory. Also, these assembly maps are, have different models in the literature. There are at least a, at least a model by Luke, again, using the, um, the spectra and so on. So essentially the projection to a point again and uh, okay so this is this is it and we can, and I can state the the main term that is just an assembly of all the previous statements which allows them in particular to have a for any discrete group to well uh, to have a well-defined morphism from the left hand side of BOMCON to well at least this model to the periodic cyclic homology of the group algebra and is given by addition and character that I just defined which is a rational uh, it's a isomorphism up to tensoring with C. And, uh, and then this cohomological assembly I just mentioned. In particular, there is a, there, there is a, 
there is a well this assembly map uh, induces a, a well-defined uh, pairing between this left hand side and and this um, cyclic periodic homology this was suspected but it, it, again this a uh, uh, as uh, maybe I didn't say it, but gamma, we, did, we don't require any further hypothesis. We are in the left hand side. So the idea is we, we are trying to work as geometrically as possible. There are no, for the moment, extension problems of cycles and so on. This will come later, perhaps in other projects. But so this pairing is possible and is given explicitly by, uh, by this formula. Again, this, uh, sorry, I, I lost my. This is uh, maybe this is sorry. This is this is this is uh, again. This is explicitly given by by top classes, some the localized classes. And if well, if you allow me just a few minutes, uh, because this is the uh, already in the well. The, this is already in the paper. We put it already in the archive in December, and as we stated in that paper, the the, the main uh, one of the main things we want to get is the formula. So it's not only there's a lot of work as you have seen to be able to to weld to to define the pairing properly, but we want a formula. Here the formula is almost done, but we would like to have even more explicit formula and more geometric in in, in terms of uh, of currents and forms. And in fact, for this, I I just mentioned some minutes how, how to get this using deformation groupoids. Well, uh, these uh, periodic cyclic homology groups are have being computed mainly by Bourgalea, uh, already in the 80s, I guess. In terms of, C of group cohomologies of, uh, of, uh, of centralizers, of, of uh, sorry, of, uh, well, here is written. So it's a quotient groups of this mg is the quotient of the centralizer of, of an element g by the subgroup generated by g. And this is just group cohomologies. And these other factors are some limits depending also on cohomologies of uh, and G, and this, uh, this, this means uh, finite order classes and this means infinite order classes. So you choose an element for every conjugacy class. So this is uh, more or less uh, very classic. There are other computations by many people. I, I don't even dare to mention all of them because there are many computations like this in the literature. So, but this is an, well, this is an explicit uh, computation. So. The question I was raising before is, is that uh, well becomes how what number we obtain when once we pair a cycle, uh, k at the, well a cycle as we defined it before. So we have a group gamma, a manifold uh, as above, and an element in equivalent k theory. And you, we said we we saw we can pair with cyclic periodic homology, but but even if now you have a group co-cycle and Suppose you can identify it already as a cyclical cycle. And uh, what, what is the formula we get? And in fact, the formula is the following that we will hopefully announce very soon, I guess. But I will say that in talks, but uh, to put some pressure on my collaborators. Sorry, Hank. <laughs> no, no worries. Well, uh, I, will, I will say some idea of how, how, to, how to, well, what, what is the expected formula and why, why this is true. Well, at least some idea, because we are still writing down some details. So the twisted churn character is in fact uh, defined in, in these groups. And uh, it, 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 these groups are already, uh, they, they depend and they have, uh, they have G components. So for every G, it's, they are already given in terms of the conjugacy classes. So this churn character decomposes as, a, as the as a little churn characters and Top classes. In fact, this this in, in for every G, the top classes are precisely constructed such that the they commute with the with the component wise uh, some isomorphisms. So um, okay. So from the other, and on the other hand, for example, in groupoid cohomology, there is a canonical morphism uh, between the group cohomology of MG and the groupoid cohomology. Of mg uh, of this uh, cross product uh, groupoid of this uh, action groupoid, this in fact uh, should be seen in, for example, if the action is free, you, would be free. You have a, you would have a. If the action would be free, you have an action a map from here to to be gamma, right? If the action would be free, and then essentially, uh, for example, as Carlos Kobici. Uh, do they well you can pull back the classes 
So here is uh, slightly more general than that because we are using groupoid cohomology, but still this map exists. So it's a map, it's a, you can pull back classes from the group cycle, group uh, cohomology to groupoid cohomology. And uh, well, sorry, here's not any, well, okay, I will conjecture it because I, we haven't written down the proof yet completely, but this uh, is uh, in progress. Um, so the formula will take this form. But this form is already uh, appearing between uh, between uh, gamma invariant forms and currents and mg, which is the fixed point submanifold. This is as every every no, every known formula is like that. At least all the formulas I know. Perhaps the methods are different, but uh, we are largely, largely inspired by Hilton Scandalis and also Con Moscovici, which even if they don't mention ex explicitly group points, in fact, uh, for me. Uh, the idea of using deformation group points already are are there is there somehow hidden, but is for me it's already in those papers. And the idea is that uh, this is something uh, we we could uh, we can the idea is to ge to geometrically compute the morphisms uh, using deformation group points. So, for example, we know how to define a morphism from the cyclic periodic homology of the group algebra to to uh, to the homology of the point of M, sorry. And uh, this we know how to show. This is uh, something we, it's already written in, in our paper. So, Wang and Wang. This is already written. And in fact, uh, the problem is uh, how to geometrically describe this map. And uh, this is, uh, this is uh, what can be done using the formation group points. But uh, I think I, I won't have time really to tell you how to do it, but essentially is uh, to really deform every step of the construction of, in the, of this kind of maps. So the, the, to to bring this uh, pullback to the to really to the group to the to the group points to the deformation group points, and then this will give the desired formula. So uh, I think uh, I can stop here and thank you very much for your attention. If you are still there. Uh, Thanks very much. Thank you. Much your applause. Mm -hmm. Other questions or comments? Uh, yes, I have one comment. Um, one comment, which is the following. Um, I mean, it seems that because you are staying at the geometric level, uh, mm -hmm. when you had this map in uh, perhaps two slides before, you had this map from the geometric group to the um, periodic cyclic homology of C gamma. Yeah, yeah. The, the one downstairs. So, I mean, uh, what prevents this map from being an isomorphism? I mean, it should be, and this should be provable somehow. Yeah, in fact, I, I think it's somehow provable that it, it's injective, in fact. It's a, that is injective, uh, certainly, but what I mean is that then you have to be careful on how you define, you know, things for going for conjugacy acid classes and so on for yeah. the left-hand side. But yes. uh, I mean, uh, th there is absolutely no reason that it would fail because we are ah, entirely okay. at the geometric level. Yeah, it's true. That, uh, in fact, I um, I think it's, well, it's not trivially, of course, but it's not trivial, but uh, that it's injected, it's maybe not so hard because mm -hmm. uh, we are only dealing with the finite order classes. Yeah, exactly. But uh, I, I, I recently learned that, uh, well, there are groups, I think Burkelea gave already groups in which uh, the infinite order part is not, tri is not necessarily zero. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if, uh, I, but you're, you're right, maybe. Well, uh, one, has to, one has to formulate it correctly, but what I mean is that the, if you want the technical difficulties of the analytic side are not present here, if I understood yeah. correctly. Yeah, yes. sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so somehow well formulated, there should be a statement that, you know, that, okay, I mean, because after all, if I follow correctly also, I mean, what was, go what was going on at the, um, uh, the RAM homological level, I mean, it was really sort of imitating what happens at the periodic cyclic homology level. Yeah, sure. Very much, very yeah. much. And uh, and also another remark which I have is that, you know, whenever this stodginess and so on appears, one wishes to to pass to from K theory to K homology and use Poincare duality because then mm. things become somehow clearer in a way. I mean, you see, yeah. so what I mean is that the wrong way functoriality, it really comes from Poincare duality which reverses the arrows. I mean. Yeah, sure. 
No, you, you're right. I mean, it is, uh, in the left hand side, all this should be possible to right stated. So I call it uh, topological K theory, but in fact, uh, it's more like a K homology. Exactly, because you, uh, when you use a wrong wave functor reality, it really means that in the back of your mind, you have K homology somehow. And then, sure. you know, then there is a chain character not only in K theory, but also in K, in K homology for cyclic homology. And, and then, you know, mm -hmm. everything should, should be perfectly compatible with these things. Okay, I would. Yeah, uh, thanks, for, yeah. thanks for that comment. It's a very good idea. Maybe yeah. we will explore it. <laughs> I have a question, uh, Paolo Piazza. Yeah. Uh, hi, Paolo. Can, hi. Uh, uh, thanks for the very nice talk. Uh, I'm, can you say something about uh, the compatibility of your left hand side uh, with the one of uh, Baum? Uh, Con Hickson. Uh, no, in fact, I don't know, but, uh, but I guess uh, I was, uh, in fact, also Alexander Engel told us uh, some, some weeks ago that uh, this question. So in fact, uh, there, there is a map for, for sure with the, let's say, I will call it a bomb con Hickson model. Uh, and there, there is a map and which is related, but uh, I still don't know if they are isomorphic. I think I think so. I mean, perhaps following uh, following uh, the kind of proof by Baum and Hickson and Schick uh, by, by 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 trying to prove that this somehow comes from a from a, from a homological theory. But certainly, there's a, this diagram commutes, and I expect that this lambda is an isomorphism. But uh, I, I, as far as I know, is nowhere written. Okay, thanks. Yeah. And the other thing is that I don't know if uh, I think the Chern character of void that I was mentioning is is defined in, in the model by Baum con Hickson. But but, uh, but I mean, uh, if if you look at the paper by Baum uh, con Hickson, there is a Chern character that goes in uh, some yes. Cauchy uh, homology, and then. Every constituent okay. of the Cauchy homology is, is uh, proved to be uh, isomorphic to the the constituents uh, uh, that um, are described in the paper affect in topology in in the volume of topology. Ah, okay. So, in my opinion, there is a, a chain character in the Baum uh, con okay. Hickson uh, model. I don't know if uh, Alain can comment mm. on that. Okay. Well, not really, but I think, yeah, of course, uh, there is uh, there is such a chain character, but then one has to be very careful in the comparison. So I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't know offhand. I mean, if, uh, you know, if it's identical, I, I wouldn't know that, no. I mean, okay, you know, what, what seems to me uh, here is that, okay, what, by staying at the geometric level, okay, what um, was described was, um, Really, a formulation, you know, of the Grote and Dickriman rock in the sense that you have chain uh, characters, you have the morphisms, and you have the the uh, you know the diagram with four entries, which is commutative. So in that way, it's really very much in the spirit of Grote and Dick. On the other hand, okay, we are still at the geometric level entirely. We are on on that side, which is fine, of course. But uh, I mean. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, one needs to be very careful on the on the on the details. So I, I wouldn't I wouldn't commit myself on whether it's true or not that the chain characters are the same. If, if for instance, if it's not known even that the groups are the same, okay, I mean, you know, it's difficult to say. And uh, and anyway, I think you know that uh, the general idea, which which is uh, very present in, in this talk is the idea that by geometrizing everything by means of smooth group points and so on, I mean, one understands much, much better what is going on because there is, uh, I mean, you know, there is a lot of flexibility and, um, and uh, lots of morphisms are defined in a natural manner and so on and, and are geometric. So, so I don't know, I, I like this very much, yes. Other questions or comments?
So if not, then uh, we thank Paolo again. Thanks a lot. A nice talk. Thank you very much to everyone. And hopefully I, I, I can see you some of you in some conference. <laughs> it will come again. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you and have a nice day. Yeah. Thank Thanks a lot. And see you all next week. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thanks. Bye.